Hey guys, Tony here. I'm here at the StereoNet Hi-Fi Show down in the Portland Hotel and I'm here with James from Klipsch and he's going to run through what they've brought here, which is a 5.2.2 home theatre setup. So James, we've got these awesome Klipsch RF7.3s. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the setup? Thank you, Tony. So we've got today running in this 5.2.2 system a pair of RF7 Mark III's which feature a one and three quarter inch titanium tweeter, a dual 10 inch bass drivers, a copper spun ceramic with some solid internal bracing and on the back side we've got a binding post to be able to split out for a biamps configuration. Fantastic. So are these a three-way speaker? So these are two-way. Oh, they are two-way Two-way. So bass drivers work in unison within the cabinet bracing. There is separate cabinet bracing inside, but tweeter provides your, your highs and your mids. Perfect. And for the centre channel? So we're running the matching uh, model for the RF7s, which is the RC64 Mark III. Again, featuring the same ceramic bass drivers and the titanium tweeter. So it's all matching components through the front stage. This is a completely sealed centre channel as well. So it's not ported, which delivers a bit more accuracy with the dialogue coming through. Centre channel in a, in a home theatre arrangement typically provides a lot more of the dialogue in a movie, uh, where the front left and front right are re-ported, which give you that punch and matching frequency for your low end. Excellent. And you've also got these bad boys at the front yes. here, these subwoofers. Why don't yes, you tell us a little do. bit about them? So these these have come out just a few months ago. This is a new reference premiere line of subwoofer. There's two subs that are sitting here, the RP1400 SWs, which are a 14-inch front slot port uh, design sub. So from last year's SPL line, they've now increased the volume capacity of the cabinet, which is increasing our long throw, so we can get down really low with our lows. Uh, 20 hertz isn't an issue anymore. We can upset the neighbours if we want to. Uh, that sort of clips is a little insignia anyway. It's pissing off the neighbours, and we fully intend to do that with our speakers and keep them looking pretty as well, I guess. Awesome. I can't wait to give a demo of these after the interview, but why don't we talk about the overheads that you got here? I know they're not your conventional in-ceiling speakers. Not, no, so, so for the sake of the show, uh, we've had We've had to adopt in some outdoors. Uh, these are CP6 outdoor speakers just to give you the Atmos effect. We're not allowed to drill into the ceiling in, in the place that we're at at the moment. So that's, that's taking care of our Atmos. Um, and then as you move through to the back of the room, for people's safety and just for, for impact, you know, Klipsch is about being dynamic and, and what better way of doing that than running a pair of RP6000 Mark IIs, again featuring a one and a quarter inch titanium tweeter and dual six inch ceramic bass drivers. So this is again still a part of our RP line. So we've got RP5000s, which are dual five, 6000s, dual six, we have the 8000s, and then the RF7s are the big daddies in that in that lineup. Awesome, and we're using them um, as, as surrounds. surrounds. For now? As surrounds. Yeah, okay. correct. And uh, for projection, we've projection. got the LS12000B, I think that That's is. That's right, it's an LS12000. 4K laser projector from Epson. You know, well lit room, you still, you know, with laser, you're still going to get a good output up uh, on your screen. So ambient light, you know, if you want to watch it during the day, you can. Yeah, and we've, obviously, I mean, the screen's a little washed out at the moment because we've got all the main lights on so that we can do this video. So that's why it looks a little washed out at the moment. But obviously for the demo you're about to see, we're going to turn all the lights off. And yeah, we're going to run a few demos guys so that you can see what this is like in the room you may not get uh, an accurate representation of what the sound is like only because we're in a, a hotel and <laughs> we have curtains here which only really absorb the high frequencies so it won't do much for the, the, the low frequencies but yeah guys I'm gonna cut across the demos so yeah stay tuned Right, guys, I'm here with Jason from Clap AV, and we're here to discuss the Klipsch Heritage MCL 905s. So, Jason, thanks for taking the time to do this video. Why don't you run through some of the things that you got here? 
Most welcome. Thank you for uh, having us on today. Look, today we are looking at the MCL 905. They are a limited edition pair of speakers. There are only 25 of them made globally. We are lucky enough to have two pair of them here in Australia, demoing one solid pair here at the Hi-Fi show. Speakers themselves, high sensitivity, 105 dB, so they're very easy to drive. We are obviously driving them with a big Mac app, amp here, 200 watts of channel, big solid cabinet, full timber construction, very heavy, driving the two 15-inch drivers inside of them. Very much uh, like the Cornwall, the big 15 inch Cornwall Heritage speaker. These like the Klipsch Heritage speakers are made in Hope, Arkansas. Uh, designs in Indianapolis. Crossover points is a critical piece for this. Uh, these pair of speakers. They cross over at 240 hertz but they have a very steep crossover point and that's what gives them that big dynamic sound, that big sound stage dynamic sound you get out of these speakers is all due to that steep crossover point. They do go through the factory as a married pair so at the early inception of these speakers being made they do go through as a left and right pair through the factory so the very same person that is putting the drivers together in both speakers is the same person same person gluing components and building and assembling these cabinets it's the same person all the way through they make their way all the way out to uh, the end of the, the production line get their serial numbers now we can see on the back of these the brackets that hold the big tractric horn up here with the 30 millimeter titanium driver inside these brackets that hold these on hark back to the mclaren the drivers the mclaren himself who manufactured uh, a lot of these brackets for the early spoilers that went on the mclaren race cars see they're paired with the macintosh over there does it come with that or is that like an optional we, extra that you suggest to pair with this you've got a few options to pair them we'd absolutely sell it with a, a macintosh amplifier that we've seen it here today and many people will attest to it does pair very well with these big clips mcl 905s. A good set of cable on the back does not do you any harm. It's all about uh, eliminating all that noise and it's about getting those extra gains. But yes, Macintosh do a lovely amp which suits this suits this well. Obviously with this combination with the valves up front and the solid state on the back, it's almost a, a perfect match for these big speakers. And what does this one retail for, this Macintosh so uh, amp here? Th this, this Mac on any given day retails around the $14,000 mark. Um, again, if they were to package them with a pair of speakers, we'd be more than happy to put a nice package price together for anyone that was serious enough to, uh, to buy them. Fantastic. And the price uh, for the so MCL. the MCL 905s, they are retailing at 35000 The challenge is there are only two of them here in the country, two pairs. If you were lucky enough to buy the pair from the show, we certainly won't charge you any extra for doing all the running time on them, but there are only two. They are limited edition. There's no more to be made. If you aren't lucky enough to buy a pair, you certainly consider yourself lucky enough if you were sat in this room with us today and listened to them. Fantastic. Well, Jason, thank you very much for That's taking welcome. the time to uh, let us know about these speakers. So guys, I'm back here with James from Klipsch and we're outside of the Klipsch wall of subs. So James, why don't you let us know a little bit about these subs? Thank you, Tony. Um, so I think we, we had a little bit of a look at them yesterday. Yeah, so these are the, the new RP1400 SWs from Klipsch. There's four new models in the lineup. They're 10, 12, 14, and 16. Uh, the 16 was the idea originally, uh, but we didn't have anyone that was seven foot four to help mount it. Up, up nice and high, plus the weight. Uh, so what we've got here is a 500 watt Class D amplifier pushing a 14 inch ceramic bass driver from Klipsch. Uh, and look, Tony, I don't know if you can get in closer and see the depth. I might actually turn the wave off for you for a sec. But what they've actually done this year is the concave on the bass drivers, they've sunken them a bit deeper. Quite deep. So compared to last year's SPL lineup. Uh, and, and by doing that, it's allowing the movement of more air. So obviously we want to be able to to move air to create that base. A lot of internal cross bracing have gone into these as well to make the chassis a lot more rigid. And they've stuck with the front firing slot port as well for this lineup. So all subs look identical. Uh, we just go bigger with amplification just to make a bit more power, I guess. Mm. It's, de it's definitely a good bank for buck, big subwoofer. If you're trying to fill that room with base, if you're running a cinema, um, you should not be looking past any of the clip subwoofers. So, we, as you can see, we've got the RP1400 here on display, which um, holds a retail of $23.99. We've got the RP1600, which isn't on display here, but you might find out in your local retailer. That's at $27.99. Uh, then we do the 12, which is $18, and then the 10 at $15.99. Great. So, good, good bang for buck in, in the lineup of clip subs. Um, 
and you know what? Don't buy one, buy multiples. It's, or it's always going to be. Yeah, more good. subs it's, is better. It's, it's, more subs is better, and um, more better, and more better, and good value. So, <laughs> you know, go hard, get that base in that room, upset the neighbours. That's what we're all about. Right? Awesome. What have we got here? So we've got three models on display here today. We've got the Klipsch 9s, 7s and 5s. All three of these are a set of powered monitors um, from the Heritage Bookshelf lineup. So we've got one one inch horn loader tweeters, edge to edge diaphragm. So what Klipsch has done in this lineup is they've increase the 90 by 90 arrangement with the Tractrix horn. So they've gone edge to edge with the design. It gives it a bit more of a sleeker look, bigger bass drivers. So I think from last year, you saw the fives. Yes. This show, so this is where this is where it all started in a small five inch bookshelf. Uh, and, and its popularity has been phenomenal. So, you know, we continue the legacy and we're, we're moving through the, the lineup. There's talks of some bigger ones coming. I'm not sure where that is at the moment. This is really a category that's taking off. You know, there's a, a big thing in the market with sound bars. People still like to play records, still like to listen to music. So, you know, this is a great option. If you're looking for something, this is this is not something that you should look past. Yeah, I've heard them. They pump out a lot of bass. Yeah, they've got some big bass. I remember when we met last year, I might even find the clip and cut to it where and I said, where's the sub? And you lifted the table. That's, and there was, that's right, I had lifted there was the no cloth sub. on the table, no <laughs> sub. So you, and this, this is what you listen to. These punch out a massive amount of bass and they all still feature a pre-out for a subwoofer. So if it's not enough and you want to put a 16 on that thing, you can. So now we move over to the other offerings that you've got here. You've got Pioneer and you've got Onkyo. Onkyo, yeah. So we can take a look. What's this one over here? This is the Pioneer so the VSX LX805. 805, which is 11.2 channel. It's the most recent release from, from Pioneer in the AVR lineup or AK pass-through, Dirac, uh, a whole bunch of features. If you zoom in, you can see power transformers and, and how large they are, separates for the amplification for each channel, and, and a bunch of cooling fans, which, um, you know, I've, I've For tried the HDMI to... boards, I'm assuming? Well, for a lot of things. So you've got HDMI boards and wireless modules on top as well. Um, but you've also got extraction fans underneath to draw the heat out. Right. Right. Obviously, when you're running these things at 80% of capacity in a small hi-fi rack, or a cabinet, you you're going to build cool. some heat, you're going to get that heat out. So these are the Pioneers? And so these are the Pioneer Alex, so you've got the 805, 505 and 305. As you step down, you move down to 9.2 channel with pre-out and 9.2 channel with no pre-out. Okay. Again, you, we're going to be stepping down a little bit of power. So 4999 retail for the big boy, 2799 for the 505 and 2399 on the Alex 305. Right. Okay, and then we move over to Onkyo. I'm over at Onkyo. Onkyo's been getting some some big praises out there, and, and so it should. They, they look real sleek. Onkyo's a big name in this in this category. They've come back to the market too. They've come back to the market. Um, so up top we've got the Onkyo um, TXRZ70, which is a 11.2 channel, 8K, 210 watts, THX certified. Um, also has features like works with Sonos. Apple AirPlay on board. So you've got all the connectivity that you're going to need. Massive transformers on top as well. I'm not sure if you can see through the grill, but they've done Probably a nice not, the Onkyo blue through the top. I don't know if anyone can see that. Big power. And again, same cooling fan systems. So they've, they've really paid attention to making sure that it's going to maintain its performance throughout you know, a three hour movie sure. at a good, good high capacity. So that's our big guy. That's a 4999. We then step down to the RZ, RZ50, which is a 9.2 channel with pre-out. So we're stepping down a little bit less power. Still good back. We're at 26.99 rec retail, you know, and I'm sure you know, in, in this day and age, you can always work out a package and a deal at your, your local retailer. But for what that's off, what's offered inside that chassis, it's uh, it's good bang for buck. And then we step back down to the NR7100, which is an RZ50 essentially with a little bit less power and the pre-outs are now removed. So if you wanted to run power amps, you'd have to start at the RZ50 and the LX505 if you want to run a power front stage. Um, otherwise, if you're happy to run straight off an integrated and you're getting into it and you're starting, they're 305 and the... A good the choice Yeah, man. With. Yeah, of course. And yeah, 8K and all that stuff. So you know you've got a bit of longevity when it comes well, to connectivity. Got, That's what we've got from, from Onkyo and Pioneer. We've gone through the clip stuff. Um, We've gone through everything. We've gone through everything, yeah. So, James, I'd like to thank you. It's been great to meet you over the last uh, couple of days. We've hung out a little bit, and yeah. I've gotten some more exposure to the brand that started it all for me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for your time, um, and I'll see you soon, I hope. Yeah, awesome. Good work. <laughs> we, we all appreciate what you do, and, uh, and keep going. Thanks, keep mate. Going. No worries. Thank you.